In today's video, we are going to be talking about the first letter in the acronym for Solid Principles, Single Responsibility Principle. This design principle suggests that a class or a module should only have one and only one reason to change. Another way to put it is that it should have one responsibility and that's it. Let's get into and take an example of what in the world this means. Here I have an employee class that does three things. It takes employees information, it takes their salaries, it calculates their salaries, and then it also will send an email based on their salary. So you might be wondering, well, what's the problem with this? Well, the first thing is it doesn't adhere to the principle that a class or module should have one responsibility. This class does three different things, it takes the information, calculates the salary, and can send emails. If there happens to be a change of salary calculation logic or email sending functionality, it would impact the employee class as a whole, which really this employee class should only be focused and worried about the information of that employee. Now, yes, this is a simple example, but this has something called low cohesion which just means that the class has unrelated responsibilities and it could become challenging to understand the reason for the class's behavior because it's just simply doing too many things. It also has poor reusability. The salary calculation and email sending logic is tightly coupled, which would make it hard to reuse them independently. If you needed to calculate salary for a different context or send emails for other purposes, you would need to extract and modify the code from this class which is then going to be code duplication and it's going to decrease the maintainability of it. Now, here's a couple of things I think you should know before we get into solving or one of the solutions for this kind of problem. A good note is don't put functions that change for different reasons in the same class. Now, to be clear, this doesn't mean you only need to have one method per class. You can have multiple methods per class as long as they are for the same thing. They should all be for the same responsibility of what that class is doing. Something else that you should know that's not really a design principle, but it's more of like a best practice is called dry or don't repeat yourself. Keeping an application dry will typically not contain any code that is not beyond the behavior it's supposed to perform. If the code for one responsibility is in a single place, then we only need to update any logic to that code without touching any other class. This is something else to think about. So let's see what we can do about it. What we're going to do to fix our previous employee class, which had three different operations it was trying to perform in a single class is to separate them out. So I'm going to create three different interfaces, one for employee that just gets the name and the ID, a salary calculator, which just has two methods that creates the basic salary and the bonus salary and only takes an employee and then an email service, which just has one method to send a salary email. Now we're going to create implementations of those. The first one's going to be a permanent employee, which just gets the name and ID and just returns that. The second implementation is the basic salary calculator. For now, I'm just having a return uh, sample decimals. And then finally, we need an implementation for the basic email service. And this just prints out employee information and salary. And what I'm going to create now is a facade class. So I'm going to call, so I'm going to call it payroll facade. All this is doing is delegating all the information from the interfaces to do some task. Well, I wanted to calculate and then send an email based on the salaries for an employee. So it's going to point to all of the interfaces and take in all of the implementations. And now in the main class, I'm just going to create an employee. I'm going to create a payroll facade class and then just call the calculate and send salary. Now let's compare both UML diagrams for each and we can see what the differences are. Okay, so we just had our email. When we just had our employee class, we had four fields and then we had two methods. Okay, as stated before, we were getting the name and ID, which was employee information. We were getting two different kinds of salaries. We, we had a method for calculating that salary and then we had a method for sending an email that gave information on that salary. So then what we did to solve this is we created, we created three interfaces, three implementations of those, and then a facade class, which again, all it is, is a delegator. Okay. That's another video. I can explain the facade design pattern, but for now, just think of it as a delegator. So now you can see is we have our facade class, which takes in three different interfaces, it takes in a salary calculator, an email service and an employee. Now, the thing is with the, the payroll facade is it doesn't care about the implementations of those, okay? So we don't, so if we were to change, for instance, the logic, when we go to send salary email, we're only gonna change information based on that 
basic email service implementation. We're not going to change anything else. The payroll facade is going to stay the exact same. The interface, the exact same. No other class or interface is going to be affected because we did what's called separation of concerns. But the point I'm trying to make is we don't want a class having multiple responsibilities. I'll have a link in the description for the GitHub for this so that you can go and look at this yourself. And now look at these videos for more information about computer science and you can learn something else. I'll see you next time.